Section 10.7 is going to discuss a topic called partial fractions. And what's going to happen is that we're going to learn how to kind of decompose two things. Now, let's take a look at things in a direction that you're used to. If you were to add these two fractions together, what would you need first? Common denominator. And that common denominator in this case is really going to be the product of both of those. And if you take the time to get a common denominator and add these things together, you'd end up with 6x minus 1. Mm, is that right? That doesn't look right. Um, let's see. The 6x is right. Uh, I'm not sure I believe this. Let's see. Um, minus, minus 6 plus 20. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking maybe minus 14 here. All right, but in any case, what we're going to work on in this section is how to reverse this process. That is, how do I start out with something like this and decompose it into kind of its constituent parts? And the way it's going to work is you're actually going to end up setting up a system of equations, which is why it's included in this chapter, because this whole chapter is about solving systems of equations. There's really a couple ways we can do this, and we'll start it with uh, some examples. In fact, we'll just do problem number four, just ask us for the setup. So problem four looks like this. We've got x over x squared plus 3x minus 4. And they want us to decompose that into two partial fractions. Well, the first step that you're going to need to do is factor this and figure out, well, what are the linear factors that go into this? So what, what's the factorization of that denominator? x plus 4, x minus 1. Now, as, in terms of decomposing that, then I know I'm going to have something call it an a over the x plus 4 term, and something else, a b over the x minus 1 term. And that's your partial fraction decomposition. Now, our eventual goal is to solve for a and b. So we're going to have to do some work. And there's a couple things we can do to try and solve for a and b. We can use a system of equations, or we can use something that uh, works out pretty good. It's called the cover-up method. But that's all they're asking for in part uh, for problem number four is just to set it up. So we'll kind of leave that one there and work on setting up another example, except this time I think we'll solve it. Problem number 18. X minus 12 over X squared minus 4X. So kind of like problem number four, the first thing we have to do is factor the denominator. So this is x minus 12. How does, it, how does the denominator factor? Thank you, Victoria. x times x minus 4. Now for each of these linear factors here, I have to have a term on the right-hand side of the equation. So it's going to be a over x plus b over x minus 4. And I'm going to show you two different ways to solve here. One of them is going to result in setting up a system of equations. We'll start with that one. And the other one is a little bit clever. And we'll, we'll use that when we can. But let me come down to here again. x minus 12 over x times x minus 4 equals a over x. And I'm going to allow myself some space here plus b over x minus 4. Yes. Now, when, when we solve for A and B, it could turn out that one or both of these are negative. We just don't know. So, I mean, you could write A minus B, and then when you solve, your positive 7 will be my negative 7. So, it'll all come out in the wash. Just, uh, just be careful to carry your signs through. Now, in any class, if you're working with an equation like this, 
one of the suggestions I might make would be to multiply through everything by the lowest common denominator. What's the LCD for a problem like this? Anyone? Yeah, right here. X times X minus 4. Bless you. So X times X minus 4, X times X minus 4, and X times X minus 4. So I'm multiplying everything through by that LCD. You should get some massive and really nice simplification here. How about the left-hand side? What's going to be left? Thank you. Just x minus 12. That whole thing's going to cancel out. x minus 12. On the right-hand side, well, that first term, just the x's will cancel out. So I'll have a times x minus 4. And then what? b times what? b times x. Now, there's two ways to solve this problem, and they both start from here. Let me show you the first way. So method one. The first way, which you kind of have to know, because you can't always use the second method. The first way, we're going to distribute this, and I'll get ax minus 4 times a plus bx. And now I'm going to pull the x's, x terms together. So if I take these two together and factor out the x, I've got a plus b times x minus 4a. And you might be wondering, sorry, well, where is this going? How is that helping us out? What we're going to do is set up a system of equations. Notice that the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. And in particular, on the left-hand side, what's the coefficient of x? 1. It's not written, but it's understood to be a 1. What's the coefficient of x on the right-hand side? a plus b. So that gives me an equation. 1 equals a plus b. Now I can come up with another equation as well. Because on the left-hand side, I have a constant. What's the value of my constant on the left-hand side? Negative 12. What's the value of my constant on the right-hand side? Negative 4. So that's another equation. Negative 12 equals negative 4a. And all I'm doing here is equating coefficients. But that gives me a little 2 by 2 system of equations. So what does a equal? And if a equals 3, then b equals negative 2, just by substituting. So your final answer would be 3 over x plus negative 2 over x minus 4. Or you could just write minus 2 over x minus 4. Either one was fine. But for your final answer, please go back and plug it in and show me the final partial fraction decomposition. Let me show you another one. Maybe, should we maybe practice this method maybe once more before I show you the other method? It might not be a bad idea to reinforce this. So I'm going to leave some space here. I'll come back and we'll do another one, or I'll show you the other method on that one. So leave some space in your notes. We'll, we'll do method two in a little bit. But for now, let's try one more. Uh, at least one more like that. Any comments on this first one before I move on to another one?
Okay, let's take a look at problem number 22. So problem 22. eight x minus three over two x squared minus x. So we'll start by factoring this out in the denominator. That's eight x minus three over, we'll see, what do I gonna do to factor this one? x times two x minus one. Okay, let's decompose this. What's the general form that I'm going to write here on the right-hand side? Michael? Perfect. Thank you, sir. So this is my system of equations, or, well, it's not my system of equations yet, but I'm going to get one. I'm going to get one by multiplying everything through by x times 2x minus 1 and doing some cancellation. Emma, maybe you can help me figure out. When I multiply this times the left-hand side, what's going to be left or what's going to cancel? This times this. Yeah, it's just going to be 8x minus 3. Cool. Equals. Ruta, how about the right hand side? Good. Perfect. So let's play the same game that we did with the last one. Are you okay with where we got this far? So next thing I want to do is distribute the a. So I'll get 2ax minus a plus bx. And like the previous one, I want to pull the x's together. So here's the x's terms, right here and here. If I put the x here and factor out that x from these two, what should I put inside this parenthesis? Thank you, 2a plus b. Now I'm ready to determine my little system of equations. Keegan, can you give me one of the equations I'll get? Sure. Can you put the x on the other side? This one? The parentheses? No, the step down. Here? Yeah, yeah, you can. Okay. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. The only reason I put it here is because it, it makes it look more like a coefficient because coefficients are in front of your variable. But yeah, you can put the x here and it still be the same thing. Okay. So the equation you get is... Um, 8 equals, there you go, 8 equals 2a plus b, equals 2a plus b. Jeff, how about the next equation? Uh, negative 3 equals negative a. Nice. Negative 3 equals negative a. And again, we kind of get lucky down here that we really already have this solved for. This is a two by two system of equations, but very quickly we get a equals three. If a equals three, plug that back into here. Two times three is six. Subtract that from eight. We'll end up with b equals two. So, nice. <clears throat> Overall, your final answer is going to be 3 over x 
plus 2 over 2x minus 1. Now I know this is a totally crazy idea, but what if, just what if, you're doing this on a test and you wanted to check your answer. How could you check your answer? By what? Yeah, if you get a lowest common denominator for both of these and then add them together, check it, you should get back to where you started from, right up here. Is it worth doing that? No? Okay. All right. You could. In theory, you could. Now, yes. Let me go back and show you a shortcut. Now, it works in this case. This case is called the distinct linear factors case. You've got this times this. These are two different linear terms. If you had two of the same linear terms, then it wouldn't work so good. Um, so let's see, uh, see what else we can do here. Let me go back up to this step right here. So I had x minus 12 equals a times x minus 4 plus bx. All right. Well, this equation holds true for every value of x. doesn't matter what x is, this equation is going to hold true. In particular, then, at x equal 4, this equation holds true. So let's put in a 4. Can anyone suggest an advantage of putting in x equal 4 here? Yeah, it's going to cancel out the a, isn't it? So we get 4 minus 12 equals a times 4 minus 4 plus b times 4. This term cancels itself out. I'm left with negative 8 equals 4b. So b equals negative 2. Well, that was special. Let's do that one more time, except we've got to choose a different value. We can't choose x equal 4. We've already used that. We need to figure out what a is. So is there a value of x that we can choose that would cancel out the b? 0, yes. So at x equals 0, we get 0 minus 12 equals a times 0 minus 4 plus b times 0. That disappears. Negative 12 equals negative 4a. So a equals 3. So you get the same answers, just in a much different way. Uh, I, I think I had an old instructor one time call this the cover-up method. It works. It's, it's nice and... Uh, nice and fast. But I'd still suggest that you know how to solve using a system of equations. Um, we kind of got to know a little bit about that based on what's coming next. Are we okay with what we have here for the first couple? Not so bad yet? Tell you what, let's, uh, let's take a break here come back and uh, make it really hard on you then, okay? After you're all rested after break? All right.